Welcome everybody. As we dive into dilating a square root function and identifying the domain and range algebraically, we're in the last section of square root functions, or at least learning about them. So if you remember this, we have several points here that are important. We have 0, 0. This is going to be 1, 1. Over here, this is 4, 2. And right here, we have 9, 3. Remember, this is like the square root of our input. So if we put in the square root of 16, we should get 4. And we're only going to get the principal root because we do not want this to not be a function. Because we only want, for every input, we only want how many outputs. So we don't want negative 4 here. We want 16, this would be 16, 4, not 16, 4, and 16, negative 4. Only one answer. So let's dive into this. So basically, we get our answer, and then we're going to do multiply it by whatever we get here. So if we remember this, let's zoom out a little bit. If we see these answers, we're going to see, hey, we're at 0. So we're going to get our, our answers. And then we're going to do something. And we're going to get our new answer. So I have our input, and we have our output. And what it tells us to do right here is times it by 2. So the square root of 0, this is going to be my not answers. These aren't really my answers, but if I write this out, I know 0, I know 1, I know 4, I know 9, and I could even get 16. So I know, let's do it in a different color. I know that these answers, square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1, 2, three and four what it's telling me to do is times each of these answers by two so i want you to times it by two now so i got zero two four six and eight so if i go over here these are my new answers my new coordinates one comma two two comma four I mean, i'm sorry not two comma four four comma four And then we have 9 comma 6. And then way over here, I should have 16 comma 8. And right here, I still have 0 comma 0. So I, this is being stretched vertically with by a factor. Of two. It's getting twice as big. So as it's getting bigger, it's getting twice as big as it normally, or twice as tall. So instead of four comma two, it's now four comma four. Instead of nine comma three, it's nine comma six. So if we have something on the outside right here, we're going to be timesing it by whatever it says. So if we go on to the next part, I have times it by the negative one half. So half of it, but also negative. So what happens is this negative part is going to flip it over, and then I'm going to find a half of whatever. So z half of 0, negative half of 0 is still 0. And so I get, um, let's write it out. I still have it right here. I'm going to circle it right here. Here are my answers. I'm going to times it by negative 1 half. So this part right here should be 1 comma negative 0 0.5. This one, 4 comma 2, is now going to be 4 comma half of 2, but negative 4 comma negative 1. Now this one is 9 comma 3. So it's now going to be 9 comma 1.5. Or is it? What's the problem? What's my error? Yeah, it should be negative. All right. So basically, just take your whatever the square root of whatever is inside and then times it by whatever is on the outside. 
That's it. Okay, so let's do this. You know, describe how it dilates. Okay, so let's pause and I'm going to give you my response and then you're going to, you can do the other one. So it compresses. So I'll, this word should be compresses. So let me write that in. It compresses, or we could say dilates. Because dilates is going to be like, you know, open or like, you know, multiply larger, multiply by fractions. So it compresses the parent graph by half. And then it reflects over the x-axis. That's the negative part. That's the negative part right here. So if it's negative, it reflects over. And then if it's if it's multiplying by a fraction, it's going to compress, get smaller. If it's multiplying by a number, then it's going to stretch. Go ahead and try this one before you fill it in. And let's try it out in three, two, one. So yeah, it stretches the parent graph by two vertically. It stretches it vertically if we want to be more, more pinpoint that a little bit. All right, let's go on the last page. So let's break it down. So a square root function can be written in the form of, let's write it as a function. Here's g of x is equal to a times the square root of x minus h. Well, let's erase that. A little bit too big. x minus h plus k. So the value of a stretches or compresses, this is dilates, this is the word, the parent graph. So the parent graph is square root of x. So when the value of a is negative, the graph reflects over what? It reflects over the x-axis. All right. The value of h shifts, also known as translates, the parent graph left or what? Right. All right. When the value of k, when you have the value of k right here, so if it's 5, the parent graph shifts it go up or down. All right, now let's jump into talking about the domain and range algebraically. So if we're already talking about this, we can talk about the domain and range algebraically right here, okay? So we can determine the domains, you know, meaning the inputs and the x values, or et cetera, or the range, which is the outputs or the y values, with a graph, but we can also do it by figuring it out algebraically or just from the equation. So the domain is restricted to the values in which the randicand is non-negative. That's, that's this part inside. Whatever's inside is only going to be positive. We want positive. We don't want negative, OK? So basically, we can take this part right here. We're going to say, hey, I want to make sure that this part's only positive. So I'm going to say, hey, remember the square root of x, the first part, the square root of x, the starting point, the starting point is 0. So if I plugged in 0, I should get 0. So I want to make sure this, what, what makes this zero? So I'm going to make a little equation right here. I'm going to say 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to zero. So now I can add 6 to both sides. And I'll get 2x is greater than or equal to 6. And what's the opposite of times 2? Divide by 2. And so I get x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So the domain of this is going to be x is greater than 3. So now I can take this and I can plug this in, and this should give me my, my output. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in for, like, let's say this is, let's, let's say this is f of x. I'm going to input 3 into my function. So 
f of 3 is equal to the square root of 2 times 3 minus 6. And then I plus 1. Well, remember, what we just figured out will get me the square root of 0 right here. And we have this plus 1. So if I do f of 3, f of 3 is equal to this. And the square root of 0 you know, will be 0, and I have this plus 1. So then the range will be greater than or equal to 1 because it's going to be increasing from this. So my technically it's it's my y right here. So I could probably say I can probably get away with saying my y, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say f of x. So f of x, f of x is going to be greater than or equal to one. All right, guys, we have you have one right here. I want you to try out, and I'm gonna give you the answer. In three, two, one. All right, so here's our domain. Our domain is going to be greater than or equal to negative two. Now let's find the range. Okay, so you might be wondering, hey, why is this bigger? Well, why is it bigger than negative one? Well, because it's going to be increasing. So if we have our graph like this, it's going to be increasing as it's going up. So it's going to be, it's going to start at negative one and increase away from there. Now let's say this was this negative five was negative instead or this five was negative. Well then it'd be going the other way. But it's not, so it's going to be positive instead of negative. Alright guys, this was another long one, but I hope you have a wonderful day.